Hello, welcome to our second lecture in our organic chemistry lecture series. Um, today we'll talk a little bit about aldehydes and ketones in terms of how we can form aldehydes and ketones so that we do some reactions. And then we'll go into some reactivity of our aldehydes and ketones, right? So let's talk a little bit about aldehydes and how we can make aldehydes. Just review some of the stuff we talked about in the past, right? So different ways we can make an aldehyde is I can take the terminal alkyne. If I take my terminal alkyne, what I can do with this then is treat it with our boron uh, BH3, our boron region, but then what, what else? This looks very familiar because we've seen this before, NaOH, and with our peroxide. And we've seen this before, if we take an alkene and treat it with these conditions, we get the alcohol on the least substitute side. In this case now, since we have another pi bond and an alkyne, we're going to form our carbon with an aldehyde here, right? So we take this one, becomes a CH2, and the terminal one here, the CH here, becomes our aldehyde here. And so we'll see that. So that's a way we can take an alkyne and convert it into an aldehyde. So what else can we do? How else can we make our aldehydes? Well, we can take what? Primary alcohols? We can take a primary alcohol, Treat it with a reagent to give us what? Give us that aldehyde. What reagent can we do that will do this? That will go from our alcohol, primary alcohol, to an aldehyde. That's going to be what? It's going to be our PCC, right? We can take PCC and we can treat that to make our aldehyde, right? These are truly the most common ones that we've talked about in class in terms of how we can take how we can take a reagent to give us our aldehyde, right? What about ketones? What can we do to make a ketone? Ketones, we have a couple more methods in terms of how I can go ahead and form a ketone. So we can take with a, we can take an alkyne, another reaction we can do with an alkyne. It gives a ketone, you can take this reagent and react it with what? H2, H2SO4. And HGSO4. Right, this is an interesting reaction. Um, it's got a nice mechanism goes with it. This will then convert in, this into a methyl ketone. Right. Okay. We can make that methyl ketone there. Right. So that's a nice reagent. We take our alkyne. Nice. We take an alkyne, we convert it into an aldehyde, or we can convert it into a ketone. That's based on our reagents that we work with. Right. Okay. What else can we do? We can take our secondary alcohols. What reagent can we do that can turn these into ketones? What do you think? What reagent can that do? There's a couple of reagents we can do. We can do PCC. That will do it. That here actually will, will work. It's a little bit slower, but we can still convert that secondary alcohol to a ketone. What else can we do? Well, we can also take our secondary alcohols and we can react them with our Na2. Cr2O7, right, with our acid. And this will do our same thing. And that will convert us into our ketone as well, right? So we can do two types of oxidations, right, to get us into that ketone. Okay, another one we just recently learned about, right, is I can take my ring structure, right? How can I put a carbonyl on there? We just learned about, about that recently, right? I can react that with what? This. I can take my carboxylic acid chloride, react it with AlCl3, and that will give us what? That basically takes this acid chloride and attaches it to the ring. And so now what do we have? What do we have? <laughs> we'll go this direction here. You can see it. I bet you can see it now is we can make our ketone here, where we have a ketone, which has got one side, it's got a, a benzene ring attached to it, and it's got some alkyl group attached to it. So that's still a ketone, and that's what we can make using AlCl3 and our acid chloride, right? So those are some methods that we can to make aldehydes and some ketones. Now, there's one method we can talk about, and this is a method that doesn't specifically give you an aldehyde or give you a ketone. 
It really depends on the structure of your star material, deciding what you're going to have, right? So what about this one region? If I took my alkene and react it with something, it could give me aldehydes or ketones. This is going to be our what? Ozonolysis, O3. I can take this, I can react it. Remember, we oxidative cleavage of our alkene. And we get this species here. And we can, from this reaction here, we can get aldehydes or ketones, depending on, on the substitution pattern of our alkene that we're starting with here, right? If we have it, then on these groups here, we can get a ketone, we can get an aldehyde. It just depends from what we're working with, right? Get a mixture of those two. Okay? So those are some reactions. So we're one, two, three, four, five, six. This is seven, seven reactions that we've kind of covered already that deal with getting us into what? A ketone or an aldehyde, right? Now that we can make a ketone or aldehyde, what do you want to do with them? Well, there's definitely some interesting reactivity properties that we can work with, right? Because we talked about this briefly, this idea about what's the reactivity of a carbonyl, of, of a carbonyl. Has to do with what? Where is that electron rich and electron poor site on the molecule, right? So if you look at it, look at a carbonyl, what do we have here? We have Oxygen, we have carbon. Oxygen is what? Electron partially what? Partially negative. Where is that partial positive charge going to be then? It's going to be on our carbon. This carbon is going to be partially positive, right? And really, you can see that based on resin structure. Are you bring electrons up here? And show that carbon having that positive charge on it, okay? So now we can see that we have a partial positive charge on carbon. That makes that carbon what? It's going to be electron Electrophilic. Okay, that carbon's going to be electrophilic. That means we can take what and react it with. We can take the nucleophiles, react it with that carbon. Okay, we, and we're going to do that, right? We're going to do that. So we can take our carbonyl, and again, this could be an aldehyde or a ketone. I didn't put any groups here because we could be working with an aldehyde or we could work with a ketone. Just in case, we just have a carbonyl. That's what we're more interested in. I take my nucleophile, right? Nucleophile is going to be electron. Rich, and what that's going to do is what? It's going to go here, it's going to then attack our carbon. And again, as it attacks the carbon, what happens to those electrons between the carbon and the oxygen, right? Something's got to happen because right now we have too many carbon electrons around that carbon. These electrons need to go away. Our new, new file attacks, we make this new bond. What's going to happen next? Well, we have a negative charge. We don't like to leave negative charge on things, right? Something's got to come in there, right? And so in this case here, generally, we'll have our first step is nuclear addition. Second step is then addition of water. Again, why do we want water then? What's water going to do? Water is going to work, give us our proton source. So we can take that proton away. And we get to this species here, right? With addition of our nucleophile. So we've done two things here, right? We have a nucleophilic attack by carbon, and then we also took that oxygen and protonated to make an alcohol. So carbon onto an alcohol. We added a group there, but we also got an alcohol out, right? So some characteristics are rated these carbonyls, right? We can react with them, and then we generate what? We generate the OH, right? Now, this will depend on, on if we keep that OH, depends on what are we working with. Is it going to have just water in there? Or maybe we'll start having acids in there as well that can be a little more reactive, give us more protons to work with, right? More protons to work with the nucleus. Okay? So this is this is just a nucleophilic attack, right? Now we can have another type of attack based on that, in terms of do we just have water for a second step? Do we just have a nucleophile? What if we have an acid in the beginning? We can take our carboxylic acid, now react it with an acid. Right? HA, that represents some type of acid. What do you think is going to happen first? What's our first step? We've talked about this in class before, right? This idea that if I have an acid in there, I should, my first step should be what? Thinking about protonating that carbonyl, right? If the acid in there, first thing you should do is use that acid to protonate something. Kind of protonate something. All right, so now we protonated our oxygen there, right? Oxygen's protonated. What's going to happen now? What's going to happen now? Is what? Resonance. We don't want the oxygen to have a positive charge on it. Electrons move up. And 
now by doing that here, oxygen's now neutral, but now we have a positive charge on our carbon. What's gonna attack our carbon? Well, now we can throw in that nucleophile can come in, right? Put on that nucleophile. So our nucleophile can come in. Again, our nucleophile could be charged, it could be neutral. It's gonna attack that carbon. And we get addition of our nucleophile in there, right? And again, depending on what type of nucleophile we have in there, we may have to do a little bit of cleanup on that one in terms of what the charge on the nucleophile is. But this is kind of our first kind of step into this about making the noise. Okay? And so that's what we kind of can work with here. We put our nucleophile in there, make this new bond here, and, and now we have our new bond. And so we'll look at ways of, of, of different acids that we can work with and different nucleophiles to do these reactions. And this is what we'll spend most of the our rest of our time on when we talk about carbonyl reactivity is about either nucleic attack, direct nucleic attack, addition of water, or we can have acid catalyzed, and then we have our nucleophile comes in. Okay? And we'll talk about different types of nucleophiles we use. Imagine this, by protonating this carbonyl, we generate a very strong electrophile, right? So generally this nucleophile here is going to be usually a weak nucleophile. All right? In this case here, where we have this nucleophile attack directly, this is going to be generally going to be a strong nucleophile. All right, and we'll talk about that classification. We've already talked a little bit about the idea that a strong versus a weak nucleophile. We'll give examples of both, right? How we can do that: weak versus a strong. Nucleophile. All right. And so then we'll go next video. We'll go start going into some examples of how we can do that and how what type of reagents we can work.